Just look at that expression on Dr. Sight's face. It's kind of hot. But you know, Skate, get your mind out of the gutter. Sorry. I've noticed it's always the it's always the attractive ones. It's always the hot ones you gotta watch out for. You, can, you can't trust them. And yes, I am calling uh, Miss Scythe hot, as well as Miss Tusfell. What of it? Ooh, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am the Story Driven Gamer, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are hopping back into the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Man, it's been a long time since I uh, recorded the last part. And by a long time ago, I mean like five minutes ago. <laughs> so, uh, I w funny story. I was going to uh, end it here and, you know, for the day, for the night, whatever. But I was kind of like, I was kind of like, you know, we're very close to the end. I really, I really want to know what happens next. Um, I thought it was later than it was. Um, I felt like I was recording for like a while. I mean, I was like over two hours, but. I forgot that I also started recording a little earlier than I usually do. Um, so it wasn't as late as I thought it was. Um, I'm also able to sleep in tomorrow because I don't work until like late in the afternoon. So once I thought about it, I was like, okay, <laughs> I really want to know how this ends. So I'm just going to hop in and start a new video. But in the last, I guess, two episodes, I haven't edited them yet, of course, but I'm pretty sure my last recording will be split into two. So in the last two episodes... We continued the trial, of course. We were, we had uh, Miss Scythe on the stand, and uh, and then eventually Mr. Drebber. You know, we know that they were working together, so a lot of it was just getting to the bottom of it, trying to prove that uh, <laughs> that Mr. Drebber like was was there when the professor rose, and all that, because he he kind of recanted the statement. We thought that, you know, the waxwork showed that he was the witness, and he was like, "No, I'm not. It was a lie." Um, but we found out the motive. We found out that he was blackmailing Miss Scythe to help him with his crime. So he was the real mastermind, I guess you could say. Um, we know that we know that Miss Scythe was uh, involved with the cover up, and we know that back uh, she also. Um, I'm still not sure. I don't know if she just messed up the execution of the professor back then, where they were implying that she didn't even like execute him for whatever reason. Which, again, makes me think that they just bury him alive. Like, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. We found out, you know, um, as far as the Asman case is concerned, um, we found out Drebber's motive, which was that um, Mr. Asman um, published that article that named him as the witness. It was the only article that did that. Everybody else kept him anonymous, but except for Mr. Asman, who wrote the article. So Drebber wanted his revenge, and he got it. And he used a scythe to cover it up. Scythe confessed to the crimes. Drebber has not yet, but that was enough for an acquittal. For um, that's the word for uh, for for Hairbrain. But uh, we decided no. We're we're more interested in the truth. <laughs> Screw our uh, defendant. This could back backfire um, imminently. But who cares? No, no, I'm kidding. That's that's always at the heart of these games, right? It's about finding the truth as well. So hopefully <laughs> we do, and hopefully it doesn't backfire. <laughs> By the end of this, it's like. You know what? You were in the clear, but now Hairbrain is guilty AF. Okay, but now here we are. So we we demanded to hear more testimony from uh, Miss Scythe. So let's go into it. The Waxwork Plot. Hopefully this is the last testimony. It all began at the scene when I saw the waxwork and the note tucked inside its jacket. The actual body the victim had indicated in the note's instructions was beneath the experimentation stage. The body had to be arranged in certain ways to implicate the defendant, which was my job. I enlisted the help of the entire forensic investigation team to dress the scene appropriately. Mm, okay. The truth about the execution ten years ago is a state secret of the highest level. I had to protect it. Okay. So, it's right. The stage and the machine were all specifically designed for the deception. So it seems, and all meticulously prepared, you did well to see through it. I am awesome at my job, thank you. You are a very shrewd boy. So kind of you to say. I've noticed it's always the it's always the attractive ones. It's always the hot ones you gotta watch out for. You, can, you can't trust them. And yes, I am calling uh, Miss Scythe hot, as well as Miss Tusfell. What of it? And what about this autopsy report then? 
All I did was record the location of the body as being in the crystal tower instead of under the stage. That's all. That's a terrible corruption. Only my team were aware of the deceit, and then only under my explicit instructions. Nobody else at Scotland Yard knew anything about it, I assure you. Good. Rex and you're in the clear. Whom we must be thankful for small mercies, I suppose? Well, I believe that testimony has clarified everything. There's no particular need for a course examination, I would say. Uh, no, I disagree. I can't sh shake the feeling that something's wrong. We also still don't know the identity of the professor. Just look at that expression on Dr. Sight's face. It's kind of hot. Rinosuke, get your mind out of the gutter. Sorry. If the defense is right to cross-examine any witness, following testimony. What is it about you Japanese that makes you all so doggedly persistent? Very well. If you so desire, counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. I wouldn't even know where to begin to present evidence, so I feel we gotta press her for more information at this stage. Cross-examination. I forgot, part, I forgot part of why I wanted to stop as well as that my voice was going. But I got me a drink of water, so hopefully my voice won't just entirely go before the end. The waxwork plot. It all began at the scene when I saw the waxwork in the note tucked inside its jacket. Okay. The glass shard was in there too. The actual body of the victim as indicated in the note's instructions was beneath the experimentation stage. Okay. The body had to be arranged in certain ways. And this is up for the entire forensic investigation team to address the scene appropriately. The truth about the ex execution 10 years ago is a state secret to the highest level. I had to protect it. This is interesting. What do you mean arranged in certain ways? When you say arranged, I presume you mean with this? Yes, the instructions in the engineer's note said something along the lines of fabricate some evidence to make it clear that Hairbrain alone could have killed Asmund. So, you mean that what you are doing? I felt Hairbrain's ridiculous screwdriver from the stage and took it with me, alone, to the abyss under the stage where the birdcage had fallen. How did you know that that belonged to him? Alone, Doctor? Oh, music's stopping. I didn't feel it would be appropriate to involve anybody else in that particular part of the deception. Something fishy about that? Oh, again, uh... I have this video recording of the whole thing. There was a void under the stage where I found the birdcage lying in the dirt. This is cool. I approached it, leaned down, and slowly opened it up. Then, I took the screwdriver in both hands and plunged it into the man's chest. As if the guy was alive at that point. She did it anyway. And then you noted that in your fake autopsy report. As a fictitious cause of death. Exactly. So, the actual cause of death was... The fall. The trauma resulting from the 30 foot drop. My word! What is it, Miss Suzuno? Something about Dr. Scythe's last statement is playing on my mind. That's all. Yes, mine too. Dr. Scythe! There's really no need to shout. I can hear you perfectly well. The defense calls for you to add what you just said to your formal testimony. Oh? Which part? What I want her to supplement her testimony with is... What she did to the victim. I, I would say the real cause of death. I don't know if we have anything yet, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know if we have anything though. A photographic print of the victim taken after he had obstinately been beamed to the crystal tower. It shows an apparent stab wound to the chest. Wouldn't she have brought the, uh... I don't know. Would she have brought the knife with her? Or the screwdriver with her? 
like so that it would be near where the body is if she was if she was staging this right like wouldn't that make sense if she stabbed him after the fact wouldn't she have like left the screwdriver in so it was clear what the weapon was or at the very least had it like near the body to throw everybody off the scent Again, unless it was the real murder weapon in which she would have wanted to hide it so it didn't come back to incriminate her. Right? I don't think we can use the autopsy report because I don't think that has anything to do with... Like, we can't... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if we can trust any of this information anymore. Because, I mean, it does say, cause of death, hemorrhage is a wound to the chest that pierced the heart inflected by a sharp implement. But she wrote this, so... Right, so I mean, we can't trust... Yeah, we can't trust anything in here. Okay, so the real cause of death, what she did to the victim. So what she did to the victim was just... She stabbed him. Let's try the real cause of death. The real cause of death being the fall of 30 feet. That part. Fine, if that's what you want. Just stop yelling, please. Prosecution concurs. Very well. You will supplement your testimony now, witness. If you wish, my lord. That will cause death with the neck trauma as men suffer from the 30 feet foot fall. Ugh. I keep coming back to this because, again, technically it contradicts this, but she wrote it. We know she wrote it, so... It might not mean anything. Because she's saying the cause of death was the... The chest wound. There's nothing about the screwdriver itself. I mean, it has blood on it, but that makes sense. Because she used it. I don't know, when in doubt, I feel like I should press everything else, too. Just in case, there might be a piece of evidence that reveals itself. Kind of like the camera did. Or at least it was updated. Should I do that, and then we'll figure it out? I feel like I should. Yeah, let's just do it. Like I said, I'm not confident enough to, to use the autopsy report, because, again, it wouldn't really be a contradiction, because we already know that she wrote it. And, and uh, fabricated it. Let's just start from the beginning. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. From what you described before, it sounds like the note was anonymous. Did you have any idea of who was behind it? There are very few people in the know about what really happened ten years ago to start with. But anyway, I've never heard of this engineer. So no, I had no idea. Yet despite not knowing who was behind the plan, you went along with it? It's a bit shady. I had no choice protecting the... Professor secret was my only concern But the horse is bolted now and the stable door will never shut again Scotland Yard's reputation will be immeasurably damaged as a result of all this Yes, thank you Lord Van Dykes. I'm well aware of that now shut up So as I understand it what you found in the birdcage was the waxwork model where then was the victim's body Okay, on to the next one. Hold it. it also helps us just gather information. So you know about the special construction of the stage used to carry out the trick then? It was quite obvious what had happened with the victim and the waxwork. And you switched the two over, didn't you? In other words, you recovered the victim's body as having been discovered in the Crystal Tower. And the waxwork, I wrapped it and sent it by carriage to the specified address at the specified time. And why were you given such directions? Presumably, so it could be recovered by Drever and returned to Madame Tospel's. I see. And then you put the birdcage back on the experimentation stage? Yes, although someone obviously made a mistake about which cage should go where. I thought I'd make it perfectly clear to the team, but still. I suppose you were focused on the victim's body, that being a more important detail. Hmm. I didn't mean to do that. 
Okay, we did that already. Let's, let's examine these two. The entire team? In perverting the course of justice? Yes, that. My team consists of the very best investigators there are. I demand loyalty from all members. We operate on a code of chivalry of shorts. Sorts. You aid in a better murder, commit perjury, and dare to talk of chivalry? Yeah. It was a matter of priorities. What? I told them to do it, and they did it. Nothing was more important than protecting the secret of the professor. My team did what was necessary without losing sight of the primary goal. I consider their conduct exemplary. Of course you would. Ugh. Don't concede the point, Mr. Narahodo. You mustn't let her win. I I need a lawyer. <laughs> a good one. I'll take that silence as tacit acceptance. Now, can we move on? Okay, one more to press. Hold it. But at what cost? Faith in Scotland Yard is going to suffer a terrible blow as a result of this. And your precious secret is out now anyway. Yes, as you say. You don't take full responsibility. Blow me down! Dr. Scythe, you are breaking my heart! Surely there was some other way you could have protected the secret. No, there really wasn't. I've done my utmost, believe me. In many ways, I respect your determination. Phew, I nearly froze under that cold stare as she said that. I do believe she was being genuine though, Mr. Narahodo. Okay. So, that's her story. She's admitted everything and revealed her full involvement in the crime. I do wonder if there could really be much more to it. Well, I don't know, but... I just have a feeling. Do you, Mr. Narahodo? The truth is, I find it strange too. How those two are reacting to this in completely opposite ways, I mean. Yes, exactly. For some reason, I feel sure they're still trying to hide something. Hmm. I'm gonna press her on this, I guess. Why not? You're quite sure of that? It was as a result of a broken neck? Yes, as a professional, that was more than apparent. You'd never know just by looking at the photograph of the victim, though, would you? No, that's very true. Obviously not. Which is precisely why coroners are needed to determine the actual facts. Yes. Assuming they can be trusted. Touché. There is no point calling her assessment into question without evidence. Let's get back to the testimony. Very well. Okay. Okay, so we just established that nothing about the picture really, because... I'll say it again, it contradicts this, but we know that she fabricated it. So I guess we need evidence that shows that... That she's wrong about that being the cause of death. Again, it is weird that she would have just left the, the murder weapon there, right? But that, I don't think that has anything to do with this, though. Let me just try one more thing. Let me... Let me press this again. Let me see what the other statement is. You mean what you did with this, correct? Oh, new dialogue. I was merely carrying out the engineer's instructions. In his words... Fabricate some evidence to make it clear that Hairbrain alone could have killed Asmund. And so you went without any of your team to where Asmund had fallen. That's right, yes. Okay, it's gonna show this again. I leaned down over the birdcage and opened it up. Then I took the screwdriver in both hands and plunged it to the man's chest. Just like that. After that, it was simply a matter of recording the stab wound as the cause of death on the autopsy report. The real cause of death being the fall, of course. 
I'm sure there's something here in this testimony. You know, if you think it would be appropriate, I'm sure you could ask Dr. Sight to change the supplementary testimony she gave before. Hmm, what should I ask her to do with the statement she added? Uh, we can try. I just want to see what it says. Dr. Sight, what you said before about what you did to the victim's body, I believe that may be significant, so could you change your, your supplementary statement to explain that instead? Very well. I stood over the victim's corpse where it lay in the toppled cage and plunged the screwdriver into it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I guess let's try pressing her on it. Hold it. I'm a little lost, but... So it was you who stabbed Asmin with this? Yes, far easier than dissection, I assure you. No precision required. What a welcome change. The victim died instantly from a snapped neck. All I do is carry out the instruction I've been given. As unflinchingly as ever, no doubt. I imagine you didn't bat an eyelid when he drove the weapon into his body. There was no need to bat my eyelids. And what else did he do to twist the facts? Remind the court, why don't you? If you wish. Okay, let's think. So... We now know what the two things are. So this is saying, this is just telling us what she did. And then the other one was implying that it was the, it was the snap neck that was the actual cause of death. Hmm. I, still, I think it's the other statement, maybe. But what, what I'm thinking of is... Because he thinks he stood over the victim's corpse where it lay in the top of cage and plunged the screwdriver into the tre to the chest. But would that imply that sh should there be blood on the cage? Like I don't see any blood on the cage. If he was if he was stabbed in the cage, and we did we established this earlier that it it had it damage it caused damage to the base. I mean, I guess he could, still could have snapped his neck on the way down. Yeah, like if he if he just if he just fell, you know, against the cage and it snapped his neck. But this is a tough one. I mean, a lot of this has been tough, but I don't know if the picture tells me anything. We see the stab wound. And it's in the locations, he said, right? Yeah, if you drive it into his chest. Again, we do have the screwdriver itself. So again, it's a matter of like, I have ideas, but I can't pinpoint, it wouldn't be any of these. I can't pinpoint exactly what it is. I feel like the cage could be used for either of these. Like I said, it's weird that the cage doesn't have blood on it. And then like I said, there's the whole the fact that the base was damaged. You think maybe his legs would have been broken, not his neck. He didn't like fall on his head. Um. Okay, I'm gonna try going. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna try going back to the other one, the other point. And I'm gonna try presenting the cage. Doctor said, "We said before about the real cause of death. I believe that may be significant. So, could you change your supplementary statement to explain that instead?" Again, can you stop having me change my statement every two seconds? I don't know if this is right at all, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, music didn't stop. Uh, again, I'm gonna try the autopsy report just to get it, just to get it out of the way because it's it's bugging me. Because like I said, it technically. Is contradictory but again she wrote it so but it, it's a it's badgering me so I just want to get it at, get out of the way maybe I'll be right but probably not Objection. yeah I didn't think so okay think Mike think so at least I've seen both statements so I can kind of 
go from there. I really think this is the important statement, though. I feel like if we can find evidence that proves that it wasn't the... had nothing to do with the neck trauma and that... The, the metal screwdriver is what killed her. Him. Ugh, I don't know. He keeps saying that. Um... Can I try the screwdriver? Objection. No! I mean, there's the picture. We even brought up the picture. We established that, like, it doesn't look like his neck is broken, but then Courtney Sykes was like, you know, that doesn't mean anything. I see the glass from the window in the background. I don't know if that matters. Uh, I'm lost. As usual. I'm at the point where I'm just presenting things to see what sticks. I don't know, guys. Is there anything else I might have missed? I, I, I pressed on everything else, right? I went around and pressed on every other point. We're not implying the crossbow was used, are we? Because it says it was found... Oh no, behind a tree under the experimentation stage. I feel like this is the most stuck I've been. I just, I just, I'm at a loss. Okay, I, okay, there's something I'm thinking of now. Because if you look at the picture, there's supposed to be two cages, right? Right, there was one that the, the wax figure... Um, fell, you know, fell from, and then obviously the one that Mr. Asman was actually in. I don't know if she spoke to it specifically, but I'm assuming Scythe didn't move the entire cage. I don't know how she'd even do that. I'm assuming she just took the bodies, or took Asman's body specifically, and just moved it from one cage to the other, right? So if she stabbed him underneath the floor, floor... Does it make sense that there would be blood? Like, it shows the little strap. There's blood on the strap of this cage. Um... I know what? I might need to go back. Hold it. Uh, hopefully... This is the most confident I felt, but I'm still not sure if I'm right. I'm not super confident, but I'm somewhat confident. Well, at least that makes sense to me. Right, because this statement says, I stood over the victim's corpse, where it lay in the top of cage, and pulled the screwdriver into the chest. But we see that there's blood splattered on the little buckle there. I'm assuming that's part of the cage. Come on, baby, please be right. Objection. Yes! Oh, thank gosh. That was driving me up the wall. Again, even though I stumbled a lot there, I'm glad that it wasn't just me, like, guessing randomly. I like when I, I, it kind of clicked. I feel good about that. I've got a nasty feeling. That this inconsistency points to an extremely uncomfortable truth. What on earth is the matter, Council? Have you lost your tongue? I just realized I'm sitting in a very weird position, because I was getting very antsy during that shuffling around and everything. I apologize, my lord. Dr. Scythe, in that last statement of yours, there's just one point that seems to defy explanation. Watch, I'm once again just completely wrong, and I was looking at the wrong thing. Out with it, my learned friend. There's an obvious inconsi inconsistency between your description and this photograph. Which shows the victim in the birdcage following the events that led to his death. Objection. Is it going to make me point it out? The court has already examined that photograph in death. Death. There's nothing new we can learn from it. Objection. Yes. We have already considered it, that's true. But we know now the facts to be different. What do you mean? I believe we should let the defense explain. Where in this photograph would you see the alleged inconsistency with the witness's statement? Right here. And I better be right about this. Yeah. I'm trying to get- I'm trying to make sure I- Take that! Look closely at the blood stain, blood stain on the victim's chest. It clearly extends in a downward direction towards the man's feet. And why is that significant, counsel? If the, if the victim was stabbed moments before the kinesis machine was set in motion, that's entirely expected. 
Ah, of course, no. That's not what happened. Oh my gosh, did it happen again? Where I was looking at the completely wrong thing. Exactly, my lord. Dr. Scythe made a very clear in her testimony just now. That the point at which she stole Professor Hairbrain's screwdriver and stabbed the victim? I guess it was when he was laying down. It was after the grand deception was set in motion, when the birdcage had fallen down below the stage and out of sight. From the shape of it, it's clear that the birdcage would have fallen on its side after the 30 foot drop. And his victim had really been stabbed locked inside the birdcage in that position? The blood from the wound would have spread out equally in all directions. For it to have formed the lo longitudinal appearance we see in the picture, is inconceivable. Ah! Okay, I would have never noticed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I kind of stumbled. I keep seeing the wrong thing, but I eventually... When I pick the right thing, it's for the wrong reason. <laughs> Given that the victim's blood seeped vertically downward from the wound, it must be the case that when you stabbed Mr. Asman, he was standing up. In short, Dr. Scythe. Oh, did he survive the fall and did he actually get up? Your latest testimony was a total fabrication. Ah! Arg! I knew it. I was right. Now I've identified that contradiction. There's only one way to explain the facts. We've all been under a great misapprehension here. What? What sort of misapprehension? Don't know yet, Dr. Scythe. You claim you were coerced into helping Mr. Driver as a result of the note he left in the waxwork. You claim that you made changes to the scene of the crime to implicate the defendant. And you claim that you authored a fake autopsy report to cover your tracks. What else are you hiding from us? But one of those claims is an out-and-out -out lie. Because the question of what the bloodstain really tells us has only one possible answer. If that is the case, what is it, man? Counsel, you clearly struck upon a revelation. Now tell the court what it is. And we are going to save, because I am about to die. Which part of Dr. Sight's story is shown to be a lie by the contradiction in her testimony? I guess we're saying the autopsy report? Because it says... Record... Oh no, no, I think the autopsy report is right. I would say the stabbing of the victim. The answer is very simple if you consider the sequence of events. If, when the victim was stabbed, the blood from the wound seeped downward as it did, we can be sure that the victim must have been either sitting or standing upright at the time. But as you rightly pointed out, the birdcage would have fallen on the side when it fell beneath the stage. So he got up. Yes, it would. Which tells us that the victim must have been in that position of his own accord. Objection. That's impossible. The man was dead, remember? No. That is the misapprehension. We have no evidence of that fact. When the birdcage fell from the stage into the void below, it must have hit the ground with considerable force. He was probably in bad shape, but he survived. But Mr. Asman didn't die in the fall. Ooh, juicy. He probably lost consciousness for a while, but when he came round, he got to his feet to climb out of the cage. Just as Dr. Scythe appeared. And then she killed him. So she's the real murderer. If the victim was in fact alive at that point in time, it changes everything. DIE!
Ah. Ah, so I am innocent. Suck it, Miss Scythe. If Odie Asmund's killer wasn't the defendant, Professor Albert Hairbrain, nor was it the mastermind behind the stage trickery, Mr. Enoch Trevor. It was you, Dr. Courtney Scythe. The plot thickens. Grrr. Ah! What are, what are, what are? Can, can this possibly be true? Have you been taking me for a fool? It was you, was it? You killed him. Or uh, maybe. You hoped that by admitting to being an accomplice in Mr. Driver's scheme, the trial would end. Before you were accused of a far worse crime. Cold-blooded murder. Murder! Oh, do shut up. You're sort of desperate now, you're making all this up. As if I would do something like that. Objection. Yes, I assure you the defense is not desperate, Doctor. Mr. Narahoto has established the facts using evidence and logic alone. He's the real genius here. But logic, don't make me laugh. Sadly, your logic has a gaping hole in it. What? What do you mean? Tch. I'd have thought it was obvious. A motive, boy. You're lacking a motive. What possible reason would I have to kill Mr. Asman? Asman was involved in any number of criminal activities, from coercion to theft to murder. But there is no known connection to Dr. Scythe there. Hmm, I'm rather relieved to say it does seem somewhat far-fetched. True, there's no obvious motive, but there's still something in the back of my mind. I feel... I feel sure I've seen something somewhere that hints at why the coroner might have done this. Does it have to do with the professor's head? I don't know. Yes, I might have tampered with the crime scene and concocted a fake report, but murdering someone for no reason is a very different story. Objection. No. When you question what possible reason you could have for wanting to kill Mr. Asman, Something did come to mind. What? Boys, the council, enlighten the court at once. I'm really not sure, as usual. Yes, we saw it yesterday, didn't we? Something that seems strange, but we had no reason to suspect it at the time. And we had no reason to suspect it at the time? And we said we found it yesterday. There's the glass? They said it appears to be from the Crystal Tower. Could it be from something else? Why would that make sense? And it was in it was in the uh, waxwork model. I'm gonna be frank with you. I'm kind of I'm once again at a loss. That was a big hint too. It's it's something they found. Let's go to the history. They're saying we saw it yesterday. In, okay. There's a particular object that explains why Dr. Scythe would have wanted to kill Mr. Asman. The screwdriver scalpels. Uh... Scalpels? I mean, there is the iron mask. I don't think it's the screwdriver, because that belonged to Hairbrain. The only reason I'm thinking it might be I'm trying to think scalpels. When did we see those? I'm trying to think about it. What would these have to do with... Drebber is the one who had the iron mask. I'm gonna try the iron mask and then the scalpels. The only reason it might be the scalpels is because the screwdriver and the iron mask are both in our court record. 
The scalp boots is the only thing that isn't. I'm gonna go with the iron mask. It's the iron mask. You've lost me. Huh? Um, sorry Mr. Nahoto, but why the iron mask? Well, of all the things I saw yesterday, it left the greatest impressions. Okay, I, that's definitely wrong. It's a scalpel. Or rather, scalpels. Did you say scalpels? Ah, oh, okay, we're on the right track now. I should have gone with my gut. It would appear that word has struck a chord, Doctor. You, come on, out with it. It was yesterday, when we visited the laboratory. Is it the- I was thinking about that, is it the scalpel that her daughter was playing with? Actually, I don't even know if those were scalpels. Look at this big thick book here. Ah, oh, it appears to be an accounting ledger. It's a record of the forensic investigation team's spending, I think. Oh. What is it? It's clear that the team purchases various equipment and supplies on a monthly basis, but... Well, one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? They're buying 500 scaffolds every month. Oh, I do remember that. Five hundred scalpels a month. At first, I wondered what on earth could be using that many scalpels for. But actually, I realize now it's not the scalpels themselves that are significant. It's the money for them, disappearing every month from the department's accounts. Ah, Asmund's criminal organization relied heavily on extortion for its funding, tracing the money from the forensic investigation team's account to find out where it was going would be extremely straightforward. See, I, I forgot all about that. See, it can be it can be difficult when there's so much time between, like, recordings and stuff, because you just, these little details you just completely forget about. Ugh. Ugh. She's about to have a heart attack. Ten years ago, when Mr. Asman was still a journalist and wrote this article about Mr. Drebber, he may well have stumbled upon information as he was re researching the story. Information relating to Dr. Scythe's darker secret that he would use to rack money from her for the next decade. So, blackmail all around. Her darker secret? Good lord, you mean? I don't know what happened on the night of that execution ten years ago. But clearly the opportunity to rid yourself of that menace was too tempting to pass up. So, in the end, you weren't coerced at all, were you? You did it entirely of your own free will. You stabbed Mr. Asman in the heart with all your might. To silence the blackmailer who knew your dark secret forever. So he was blackmailing her. Um. Actually, that's two blackmailers. <laughs> Drebber and Asman were both blackmailing her. You'll never understand. None of you. What we've had to keep covered up all these long years. Well, anyway. I got the apprentice was just there. I barely acknowledged him. I kind of forgot. <laughs> Even though he was in every uh, shot, I kind of just eventually forgot about him. As very little of the machine remained after it was ripped apart by the bomb, the truth of this case can never be properly established unless you speak out. And if you decide not to... It's very possible that Courtney Scythe will escape punishment for her crimes. Please, sir, own up to what you've done, and tell the court the truth about what happened. Come on, Drebber. Now, ten years ago, you told the truth, and you were robbed of a bright and successful future as a result. I can certainly understand your bitterness, and your consternation now, however. This is surely the chance you've been waiting for. To sever the hold that fate's had over all the, you over all these years. Super high voltage instantaneous kinesis? I mean really. You probably thought it was a BS from the start. 
It's the adult grade mock scientists that are the worst, you know. They don't recognize the fact that they don't have talent. They can't even get that right. And so they end up chasing impossible dreams, having unbridled faith in their abilities. They go on and on about their wonderful hypotheses, their stupid eyes shining like a little child's. They make me sick. I cannot buy their foolishness. Careful, Mr. Drever! Don't you dare break my expensive table. I was particularly pleased with the kinesis machine. It made for quite a show, didn't it? So you admit it? You admit that it was nothing more than a sham made for the purpose of killing the victim? Yes, I admit it. Finally. I did it all. In the name of revenge. Figured? Revenge for the future that Mr. Asma's article had deprived you of ten years earlier. But the revenge you sought didn't stop it, Asma, did it? Which is where the very particular waxwork comes in. Yes, I see. The condemned convict that you saw rising from the grave in Lowgate Cemetery ten years ago. If your account of those events was all true, then obviously Scotland Yard couldn't afford to acknowledge what had happened. Mm. Even if it meant discrediting a bright young man and crushing any future career he might have had. Kinda feel bad for him. So your plan required that you abduct that particular waxwork model in order to exact your revenge on Scotland Yard as well. Or on Dr. Scythe, to be precise. This was a very elaborate plan. <laughs> Even in despair, I still got the moves. It was a year ago. By some extraordinary twist of fate, Asman turned up at my workshop. He didn't remember who I was, of course. He just wanted to employ my services as an engineer. And he happened to have a paper with him. An article on the front page caught my eye. About the coroner who'd handled that bogus autopsy being appointed head of a new forensic team. When I learned that news... My cognitive processes started to devise the plan. What a horrid tale. He robbed me of my future, so I wanted to use the man's own wiles against him. For revenge! And have that Washington Scotland Yard eating out of my hand at the same time. So I'm not talking so much or commentating so much, I'm just trying to take in his, uh, his response. I wanted them all to suffer the same humiliation I'd had to suffer. He wanted revenge on a lot of people. Scythe and the Asman. That's why I had no problem blackmailing her. Your actions against those who ruined your future were justified as revenge, at least to yourself. Certainly no one has the right to destroy another's prospects. Especially for purely selfish gain. And yet... In carrying out your plan, you did exactly that to someone else, didn't you? I don't care, did I? Professor Hairbrain's only crime was passion for his hypothesis. But you had no compunction about sacrificing his future to effect your revenge. You knew that he would be forever branded a failure and a fraud. That's true. It's very true, Ryanosuke, so he did the exact same thing that the others did to him. Perhaps life treated you unfairly ten years ago, and others' misconduct left your life in tatters. But remember this. You suck. Your own actions resulted in exactly the same thing for another perfectly innocent young man. He just breaks down and cries. You're right, I'm sorry. I... I... Trevor said now. My B. And that's that. Phew, this was a long uh, trial. Lord Van Zykes, what of Dr. Scythe? An immediate warrant for her arrest has been granted, and she's been remained in, remanded in custody, my lord. I presume she will face trial in the coming days. 
along with Mr. Drever. Good. May they all rot in hell. A most regrettable situation indeed. She's made great contributions to her profession over the years. It really is a hard truth to swallow. However, that is a topic for some future occasion. For now, Professor Hairbrain. Oh, um, yes? It seems there was a great deal more to your experiment than you realized. However, I think we can assume now that all the sordid details have been brought to light. This has been a very long and profound trial, but I'm pleased to say you are absolved of all guilt. Uh, great. This whole experience has taught me a very great but painful lesson. I've, I've been, I mean me, this dedicated scientist, this, this devotee of natural philosophy. I've been selfish and self-centered, and above all, a fool. Yes, you are correct, Professor. I spent my life thinking of nothing but my research. Misguidedly believing that I could do whatever I set my mind to, despite my lack of talent. And the worst of it is, in the process of course, others pain and misery. Others who are far, far greater people than I. No, Professor. That's not true. What? I am your BFF. I'll not like. I will not hear you talk about yourself that way. Don't tie yourself with the same brush as Drever. What happened was his doing, and his alone. This outcome is his face, not yours. You are not to blame in any way. What Van Zykes? And the derision with which he referred to you earlier, calling you a fool, talentless even. He's a liar. Why are your pants on fire? The man has no idea. To believe in yourself and work your fingers to the bone to realize your dream. That's laudable, not laughable. Look at you, Van Zyke, spitting facts. Hint, hint us with some inspiration. No one has the right to decide another for such choices. Oh. Can I hug you? Thank you, Beric. Okay, enough of this sentimental crap. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord? It is the court's expectation that you find the defendant not guilty of the charge of which he stands accused. I presume there are no objections? None for me, my lord. Certainly not. This trial has really made me think, but this is... This is the right decision. It's all been proven methodically and rigorously. I have no misgivings whatsoever. Huh? What's that? He's done, is he? It's all over. I wasn't paying attention. I actually just finished my nap. I don't know what's become of the yard these days. I don't recognize the place. Okay. Thank you for that. Very well. In that case, I hereby pronounce the defendant not guilty. Time to celebrate with confetti and fireworks as usual. As is the custom in uh, our homeland of England. Court is adjourned. Slam. Ooh boy. That was long, but I was on the edge of my seat. But when I wasn't getting frustrated with myself. It's over. That was some trial, yeah I'd say. That was an ama that was an amazing trial too. I was completely wrong about my theory that I kept running with, but it's fun being wrong. I mean, I don't like being stumped or stuck. That part sucks, but when you're wrong and then you find you find out what's really going on and you're kind of blindsided, like, oh shoot, that's what's happening! Dang. Twenty fourth of October, four thirty three p.m. The Old Bailey Defendant Antechamber. Professor. What a splendid outcome, isn't it? Oh, it is, it is! Congratulations, Professor Hairbrain! He doesn't look happy. Mr. Narihoto! Miss Suzato! I am truly, truly beside myself with gratitude. How can I ever thank you enough? I'm just glad it's all been cleared up. That you realize you were just caught up in a bad situation. Yeah, none of it was your fault. Oh, right now, you know, if I had that research grant money. Ah! 
I give the whole lot to you. Every penny. Well, that's very kind, but I'm just a student, so can't do much with that. We don't need any financial reward. Your acquittal is more than enough. But seriously, you're going to pay us, right? Oh dear, what can I do? Aha! How about this? As a memento, the paper about my hypothesis is inside. Well, this is a memento then. Thank you. I've been wondering, Professor. What are you going to do now? No idea. Oh, oh my, yes. What am I going to do? My hypothesis and my great machine lie in ruins. But still, it's been too long since I was last in London, so perhaps I'll enjoy some sightseeing. That's the spirit. I must explore the great exhibition whilst I'm here, too, and see if new inspiration hits me. Oh, yes. That's a wonderful idea. I... Oh, I can't allow that. I keep thinking it's Greg's. Is, or is it Sholmes? Or who is it? Ah, hello. Why not? No, Lord Van Zykes, what are you doing in here? Beric. I'm sorry you had to go through that, Albert. Well, if I'm honest, it it was terrifying. I shot myself multiple times. You were like a great demon behind your fence there, snarling down on your prey. Never say that again. You are one of the few true friends I have. I couldn't leave it to anybody else to handle the prosecution. Or the defense. Sorry? Or the defense? Did, did I hear that right? Is he saying he personally wanted me to... Defend him? I always knew they had my best interests at heart. Don't worry. Uh, how about you show me around while I'm here in town? It's been a long time since we left university. We have a lot to catch up on. Right now. Listen, Albert. In a few days, your acquittal will be made official. When that happens, you must head straight to Dover. I'll accompany you. What? From there, you'll cross the channel and make your way back to Germany. I've already purchased the tickets. But, but no. Hold on a minute, Beric. Oh, is he worried about the Reaper? The actual Reaper? What about the Great Exhibition? This is the chance of a lifetime for me. I want to look around. No, no stretching, Albert. Give up on the idea. Ugh. So, sometimes it's hard to see any warmth in those eyes, Beric. Um, Lord Van Zykes? What's all this about? Probably trying to protect him. Unnecessary precaution. Yes, I think I understand. You do? I think I do too. Well, I was told me that when you met Lord Van Zykes at his office some days ago, he asked how Mr. Natsume was doing. Yes, that's right. I remember being surprised at the time, and thinking it was nice of him to ask. The point is, Mr. Natsume is still alive and well, as, as far as we know, even though it's been more than six months now since he last stood trial with the Reaper as the prosecutor. So I guess if he's sent away, he'll be safe. Ah, you, you must mean the Reaper's influence doesn't stretch overseas? Those in the Reaper's sights meet their ends days or sometimes months after their acquittal. That's been the pattern up to now. But of course we know that both Mr. Natsume and Gina were completely innocent. Yeah, Gina's still here, though. True. And perhaps that governs the Reaper's actions. The truly innocent are spared. But I don't want to take any chances with a close personal friend. Fair enough, but... Beric! And how would anybody know if he's truly innocent or not? Like the mustache nippenese, this man should leave the country without delay. That's why I'm packing him off to Germany at once. Pack your bags, we're going. R right. Does your friend shape packet packet get any say in it? No. Goodness, was this your intention all along then, Lord Van Zykes? In court, when people think of him as the Reaper, this man seems absolutely merciless, and yet... He's actually a good guy. Sometimes it feels as though I don't understand him at all. It's time to go, Albert. Back to prison for the time being. 
Uh, yes. All right. Well then, Mr. Naruhodo. Thank you so much for everything. You got it, bud. Not at all, Professor. It was a pleasure getting to know you. Best wishes, Professor Hairbrain. Don't die on us. Well, once the dust has settled, you must come and visit me in Germany. Sounds fun. That'll be the next game. Anyway, goodbye for now. I'll have to work on my German accent. Oh, you're still here. Now, my Nipponese friend. Oh, yes? I thought you were gone too. <laughs> we have matters to discuss. Can you spare me some time? It's getting kind of late, but for you, anything. You want to talk with me? I'll be waiting in the courtroom in ten minutes. Well, that was strange. For some reason, I didn't get that sense of impending doom as he walked away this time. The Enigma Barrack Von Zykes. What does he want to discuss, I wonder? The answer awaits in the courtroom, I suppose. Here goes, then. Okay. 24th of October, 4.58 p.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. Oh, does it have to do with the, uh, the professor? And the apprentice is just, he was just in here the whole time. He didn't move an inch. So are you satisfied? You seem to guide the scientist from a great injustice. Um, yes, I think so. I'm relieved at least that the man's innocence could be proven. Anyway, I imagine you've been wondering where my animosity towards you Nipponese comes from. Ooh, you gonna tell us? Is the professor uh, from Japan? Well, at first I thought you just didn't like me. I imagine you saw me as a pretentious child from an unappointed land who had no business being here. But now I think differently. We truly know our ways. So I would guess that some specific incident led to your thorough dislike of my race. Will you tell me what happened, please? You racist? I mean, Van Zykes? The professor. I thought I'd never hear that name in this courtroom again, to be honest. He... He took your brother's life. Clint. My brother was Clint Van Zykes. That's right, he wouldn't talk to us about it before, during the investigation. 16 years ago, when I was still just in my teens, he was already the director of prosecutions and a key member of the judiciary. I looked up to him. He was everything I aspired to be. He was involved in the establishment of justice systems in foreign countries as well. There were exchange programs between Britain and other nations then too, to share knowledge and ideas. As part of one of those programs, three judicial students came to Britain from your homeland, the Empire of Japan. Oh! If it was 16 years ago, then... One of them could have been my father. Of course, I remember Dr. Mikotova well. I had no idea. I was a minor at the time, training at the prosecutor's office. One day, Clint introduced me... Clint introduced me to the three visiting Nipponese. So, you've actually met my father? He and his colleagues were polite and amicable. They were adept at their work and exacting in their standards. It was my first encounter with the Nipponese spirit, and it made a very great impression upon me. But six years later, that's when it happened. The investigation was going nowhere. There were no suspects even. Just an ever-growing list of victims. And in the end, my brother became one of them. The last, in fact. Before the case was finally resolved. I'm so sorry, Lloyd Van Zykes. Truly. What does that have to do with the Nipponese? Clint was al always ready to put his life on the line for justice anyway. So he wouldn't have wanted it any other way. He lost his life to the killer, but it was his victory in the end. For me personally, though... It was a great loss, I can imagine. I found myself in a very dark place indeed. 
Aw, this is a sad story. Not that I expected it to be happy. When I finally found out the killer's identity. The reason why no one had been able to catch the man. Shooter ceased to be such a mystery. He'd been hiding in plain sight all the time. In plain sight? Are you aware of political events ten years ago? It was a period of extremely sensitive diplomacy between the British and Japanese empires. You were definitely touched on that in previous cases. A new treaty was being forged, I think. Correct. The Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation was being concluded. The leaders of both countries were deep in extensive political discussions. Which is why this particular killer's appearance in court was conducted as a closed trial. If the British public had known the identity of the killer, not only would the treaty have been in jeopardy, but our two nations could very well have ended up at war. Oh, so this is deep. What? A, a war between Britain and Japan? But that would mean... Oh my! You mean to say the professor was? Yep, I think I was right. Nipponese or, you know, from Japan. When the trial reached its conclusion oh. earlier, I thought to myself, yes, it's time. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna unmask him. Time for you to come face to face with this hideous monster. I'm wondering, is, uh... Actually, I was gonna say, have you heard of Van Zyke, so speak? Besides, like, objection. I borrowed the key for the mask from the proprietress of the Waxwork Museum. Okay. So see for yourselves now. Confirm it with your own eyes. Okay, let's the do this. It's been hidden this past decade. Oh my gosh. I can't... Who? That's the professor? Yes, that's him. Is it... I want to guess. It's a young guy. It's not Kazuma, is it, or something? Until now, the thought never even crossed my mind. Does that even make sense? I feel like we ask, we and Oscar would be reacting more. Like the mass murderer whose crimes shook Britain as never before. Wait, is that? Was Japanese? Oh, is that what we're getting at? I was. I'm trying to think. I'm like, wait a minute. This guy looks familiar. Okay, but I already okay. Wait, wait a minute. Do we know this guy? He, he looks familiar. That's what I'm saying. I feel bad for not knowing right away. I feel as though I've seen it somewhere. I'm it's strangely familiar. I'm very sure we have. Uh, do you just get hit in the head? Oh gosh. Getting intense. Is it, is it you, Kazuma? Father. Father, it's his dad? Uh, what? Father? Take off the mask. Kazuma. It is Kazuma. My best friend, Kazuma Asogi. Oh my gosh, she is alive. After a whole year, finally his memories return. But have we met his father? As he stood there before me. He's back! Ryunosuke. Good to see you again, buddy. Ah, uh, that's so now cool. Can... My friend. Kazuma-sama! Judicial Assistant Mikotaba.
It's been a very long road. Thank you. So Cosmo's father was the professor. Thank you for guiding my friend here when I could not. Yay! It was an honor. Oh, I love this reunion. I knew you wouldn't die that easily. Cosmo. Now I was pretty sure you were dead. I owe you thanks too. Until this game. For taking good care of that in my absence. Oh. Oh, uh, would you like it back? Kyle, I haven't I haven't used it for much. Great blade of the Asobi clan. Passed down through the generations. When we left Japan, this sword Pretty cool was sword. friend's side. The Japanese man's katana is his soul. He couldn't be parted from it. But then, when the incident happened... So he survived this whole incident. It was Susato-san's wish that I inherit the sword. And did Sholmes know he was alive? I've kept it with me ever since. Along with my memories of the friendship we shared. Ah. This by my side. I always felt that you were watching over me somehow. I was. I was stalking you this whole time. He just like cuts off my head. I am evil. I am the. If I am actually the professor, carrying on my father's work. You sound, you sound creepy there. Are you saying... Surely not. You mean... You knew all this time. I'm looking at it. But... I still can't believe it. This mass murderer... Is Kazuma's father. You're gonna cut off his head? I was really expecting it to be somebody we actually knew. Let me know in the comments if I'm just forgetting. Like, I even said he looked familiar, but I don't recall ever seeing Kazuma's father. Like, actually meeting him. Ryunosuke, we have much to talk about. But now is not the time. Being all cryptic on me. I'll be seeing you. He just disappears in a puff of smoke. That's all Kazuma said. Before he turned and left us there in the courtroom. He didn't even compliment my cool idol uniform. So he's living off the image of the man who took my brother's life, is he? Yes. Kazuma Asagi. My best friend. Three months ago, when Lord Strongheart introduced us, I had an inkling there was something there. Some connection. Why did Lord Strongheart do that? Why did he make Kazuma Lord Van Zyke's apprentice? And when he was suffering amnesia, too. Yeah, something's up with that. A man was app apprehended, even executed, but his legacy just won't die. That's the sad truth. Anyway, that's all I had to say. I thank you for meeting with me as I asked. I'm glad we met because that was a cool scene. So Cosmo was with us during that whole trial, just ch straight chilling. Ten years ago. My grandmother took me to the railway station. We were there to meet my father from the train. For me. 
It was the first time I'd ever seen him. Poor Suzuto-san. All this is tied up with painful memories for her, too. She's never talked about this with me before, though. It took time to adjust to having Father around, but that's when I was starting to get used to it. He called me into his study one day. He told me that a great friend of his had passed away in London, and that the friend had left behind a son, a boy seven years my senior. Father told me the boy had made a promise to his late father, so he was studying to become a defense lawyer. Ugh. Again, so much backstory. I wanted to help, so I studied to become a qualified judicial assistant. What a good friend. As I'm sure you've worked out, that young man's name was Kazuma. Was Kazuma Asagi. <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> So you see, that's how he and I met. Cool. For a brief moment, my great friend had returned, only to disappear again all too soon. But in that fleeting encounter, something stirred. Something that had been dormant for a long time. As if great wheels had been set in motion. I could almost hear them creaking into life. In some ways, it was the end of a chapter. But in many, it was the start of a new one. Yep, we still got two chapters left in the game. And, phew, that was a long, uh, that was longer than I thought it would be. But, you know what? I'm glad I, uh, I'm glad I saw this chapter to the end. Okay, that's that. So much happened. Oh my gosh. So, we got to the bottom of the case. We got to find out who the professor was. So the first one really is dead. I thought it was going to be, since they were protecting its, like, face, I was sure it was going to be somebody we knew. Like, personally. And I guess, I guess not. Like, nobody who's alive. He obviously died a long time ago. But, he had connections to Cosmo. We got that confirmation. That freaking Cosmo really is alive. The professor was his father. We still have the Reaper of the Bailey. I'm wondering if that could be Cosmo. I don't know. Imagine if he, you know, his his father was a serial killer. I mean, what if he's like a a serial killer of justice, kind of in his own sort of way, taking after his father in that way. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if he knew his father was the professor until that moment. I'm assuming that's when he realized it. So it doesn't really make sense that he would be like carrying on his father's work this whole time, or at least trailing after him in that way. So I don't know. There's still so many questions. Like Rinosuke said, we got Kazuma back, but. He just kind of disappeared, so I don't know if we'll see much of him again. I mean, I'm sure we'll see him again, but don't know if he'll be, like, around as a big part of the story if we'll see him much later on. Hopefully he doesn't actually die. I imagine we thought he was dead this whole time, and then, like, in the next chapter he's dead again. I don't know. I'm thinking he could be the Reaper of the Bailey. It would make sense, but... I don't know. We'll have to see. But I've been recording for a very long time today, so I'm going to wrap the video up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um... Leave a comment below to let me know what your thoughts are about the uh, the Let's Play in the game so far. And also hit the like button the not and the notification bell. Uh, share the video and the channel with your friends, family, and loved ones. I really do appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. So take care, and bye-bye.